Good day friends. Today we are going to discuss about the fixed CO2 installation on board ship. We know that the CO2 are stored in the bottles, but uh, some of the ships, especially the Roro vessels and all, uh, you must have noticed the CO2 is installed in the form of bulk. Uh, it's a bulk CO2. But in this uh, video, we will discuss about the uh, CO2 stored in the bottle form. Okay, uh, in this slide, uh, we will discuss uh, about the why CO2 gas is used. As we know that uh, the question is still same that why CO2 gas is used. So, uh, first uh, main thing is that it's a very good effective fire suppression agent. Means it is having the capability of uh, extinguishing the fire on wide range. And we know that uh, CO2 basically works on the smothering principle. Here the another advantage is this is having the high rate of expansion. So it gives you a very fast work or uh, the extinguishing rate is fast. Next one, uh, the CO2 is providing a heavy blanket as we have discussed and this is something which is going to give you the smothering effect and oxygen level comes down, the fire is completely extinguished. And another on the last uh, mode, uh, it is something which is uh, not required any cleanups. Uh, generally uh, when you use water or, or the DCP uh, so or the foam even also so this is something giving you the cleanup part uh, the cleanup associated but in this system uh, it's not required okay now we will uh, see about the several advantages of co2 so co2 when we are using as a fire fighting agent so what are the advantages first is the density is 1.5 times higher than the air so co2 is settling down and it displaces the air so no more air present at the fire site next it can be easily liquefied and bottled 20 to 30 percent co2 concentration extinguishes fire by the smothering okay it is non-corrosive in nature it is not going to corrode any of the ship's part non-conductor of electricity it is not going to conduct any electricity no residue left after application that we have already seen no deterioration uh, with the age uh, that is another very much issue even 10 15 years no deterioration with the age the quality of the uh, next uh, some disadvantages also associated uh, with the co2 so you can see over here it is highly asphyxiating in nature means 9% uh, concentration is going to cause you unconsciousness within minutes and uh, it is another disadvantage is it is having very little cooling effect so chances of reignition are there especially on the solid fire and all and when discharge the CO2 particles is, is uh, in, in the solid form also then it is going to produce the static electricity and this can produce the spark okay so this is uh, these are the some disadvantages also with the co2 but uh, uh, other other way uh, in the last slide we have seen uh, there are a lot of advantages okay. uh, another thing now we are going to discuss about as per the solar requirement what are the co2 flooding system okay so co2 flooding system as we know that uh, the as per solar guidelines 50 percent of the co2 must be discharged uh, within one minute and at least 85 percent discharge within two minutes okay so within two minutes uh, it is going to be discharged uh, the 85 percent of the co2 content inside the bottles that's why it is called flooding system that's why it is called co2 flooding system okay so uh, another thing is that when we talk about the capacity calculation of the co2 so the requirement solar guidelines says that 30 percent of the gross volume of the largest protected cargo space we have to take into accountability or 40 percent of the gross volume of machinery space excluding engine casings 35 percent of the gross volume of the machinery space including engine casings of the vessel of uh, 20,000 or less and then total amount of the co2 cylinders depend upon the highest gross volume out of ever one two three in particular shape that means when we calculate all these three so out of these three uh, number one number two or number three whatever is having the highest gross volume uh, that we have to take into consideration okay so in continuation with the requirements of the co2 flooding system uh, we will see over here uh, what are the further requirements as we have seen already in previous slide now the continuation with this safety procedures must be there against unauthorized use of them so we know that on board ship the chief engineer is authorized person to deal with machinery space to be fitted with audio visual alarm system and the 
ventilation blower trip okay so whenever uh, the co2 flooding system is being utilized the uh, they are having the audio visual alarm system in the engine room and this is entirely different from the machinery space alarm and we have the ventilation blower also or you can say the or uh, blower uh, fans uh, must be tripped or blower flaps funnel flaps also being tripped sometimes only alarm is there uh, the trip is not there this is as per the manufacturer to manufacturer difference only the uh, alarm comes that audio visual alarm and uh, the trip is not associated manually you have to trip it uh, alarm must trigger well before the operation of the co2 flooding system and uh, this gives you the warning alarm uh, that the co2 is going to be uh, injected or flooded into the engine room must come out permanent piping arrangement should be made Men means uh, this is something which is co2 fixed installation all permanent arrangements of the piping must be done manifold distribution pipings must be pressure tested uh, later on the other slides we are going to see about the pressure tested uh, part of it or you can say what are the uh, pressure at which it is being tested and the uh, another thing which is associated diameter of the associated pipes in the system should not be less than 20 mm okay so this is uh, also the CO2 flooding system in continuation of this requirements we have to see that the copper and flexible pipes are allowed only in co2 cylinder and the common manifold only in in this reason okay distribution pipes to cargo space should not pass through the engine room because if suppose any leakages then the co2 will uh, be completely flooding the engine room and it is quite dangerous situation for the engine room staff okay all stop valves to be checked every month that is the requirement and ensure they are the working condition and positions the co2 flooding system installation to be checked monthly for any leakages and all control valves to be tested and okay as we have already seen the co2 flooding system requirements now the requirements of the co2 room in co2 flooding system carbon dioxide bottles are placed in a separate room we know that we have a separate room uh, for the co2 bottles to be stored a spaces for the storage of cylinders or tanks for extinguishing gas should not be used for any other purposes I means co2 room is specifically designated uh, only for the co2 gas or the co2 bottles these spaces should not be located in front of the forward collision bulkhead always it is behind okay access to these spaces should be possible from the open deck okay so uh, if it is there so the access is from the next uh, you can see over there spaces if it is the co2 room is situated uh, below the deck then in that case uh, it must be accessible by the stairway or any other ladder from the open deck a space is located not more than one deck below means if, if if it is there especially in container vessels which i have observed uh, it is uh, below uppermost continuous deck so there is a ladder provided for entrance into that particular room or it is not more than one deck below okay spaces where the entrance from the open deck is not provided which are located below deck are to be fitted with the mechanical ventilation system that is always there the exhaust duct should be lead to the bottom of the space that means uh, we have the exhaust uh, trunking also uh, situated in this uh, co2 room and uh, what we can see that uh, this is to be uh, lead to the bottom side why bottom side uh, the exhaust ventilation system is being there because the co2 is heavier than air approximately 1.5 times which we have seen earlier and uh, then if it is leaked or accumulated to the bottom of the space so the exhaust suction should be associated at, at the bottom of the space and it withdraws it okay such spaces should be ventilated at least six air changes per hour so the requirement solas guideline change says that in the co2 room it must be six air changes this is the part six air changes in uh, most case now we will go and discuss about the pressure testing of co2 flooding system what are the requirements so this is something which is your pipe sections where where we have the various sections associated this is the area and this is the material utilized and the test okay so uh, i will suggest you to just have a look on this that low pressure suction uh, sections which are there so these are the branch pipes connected to the nozzles and these are the galvanized seamless magnet steel seven bar air blowing test generally we have seen that annual basis the specialized agency come and do that medium pressure sections uh, master valve to main and branch pipe is this this is uh, approximately 80 bar pressure test is done okay and high pressure sections this is co2 cylinder to the master valve 
and this is something which is about 190 uh, bar pressure okay and the pilot control line this is of made up of copper tube which is which we have seen already it's about 58 bar pressure test is done so as per the guideline uh, the pressure testing is being done and uh, working of the co2 flooding system is going to start with this main co2 bottles contain carbon dioxide in a liquid state uh, pressure of about 56 bar at 20 degree centigrade so this is also being asked sometime so this data is there stored at 56 bar at 20 degree centigrade okay so, uh, temperature must be uh, required whenever you say the pressure because uh, at the temperature increases the pressure also is going to increase co2 from the main bottle is released through the co2 cabinets as soon in the co2 cabinet door is open a micro switch is activated and micro switch will ensure the activation of co2 warming alarms and ventilation set up CO2 release cabinet or the release box consists of two pilot CO2 cylinders or the bottles containing CO2 inside. So whatever is their literature, uh, I will also show you in the diagrammatic format. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are going to see now uh, the working of CO2 flooding system as we have seen in the previous slide also. The pressure of the CO2 inside this uh, pilot bottles, uh, which is there. Uh, is same as the main CO2 bottles. Okay, so what happened? Only quantity of gas is uh, being different in the pilot bottles. Generally, it is 25 kg, and in the main bottles, 45 kg. The CO2 uh, to be discharged to the protected space once the pilot valve is being opened. So we will see that there are two bottles, and uh, we have to open one bottle that is going to open the master valve, and uh, another bottle is going through the time delay unit to puncture the bottles. And once the bottle is being punctured, it is going to be discharge to the main manifold so that is the main thing okay so it is already marked in the cabinet door that uh, which is number one bottle which is number two bottle and the number one bottle must be first opened first uh, the valve number one has to be opened and then we have to open the uh, number two okay which will pass through the time delay unit co2 pass through the non-return valve and opens pneumatically operated master valve so master valve that is your main control valve through which the co2 is directed to all the nozzles inside the engine room okay so this is the master valve so why while opening one the master valve will be open okay when we talk about this next uh, number two valve so this is in the release cabinet once you open this one the co2 uh, is going to the main co2 bottle head assembly through the non-return valve and the time delay unit and this is going to uh, that thing as uh, the co2 flooding system line diagram you can see over here we were talking about the release cabinet uh, is uh, is one release release cabinet is in the fire control station and another release cabinet in the uh, your uh, co2 room itself okay so uh, this is for the remote operations so that what i have explained in the literature previously this is the number one bottle and this is your number two bottle so once this uh, bottle head valve is opened and this uh, one will be opened so the co2 will be uh, released through this and this is something which is your a pneumatically operated master valve okay or master distribution valve this complete valve so this is going to be opened up and once the co2 uh, will come over here then it will pass so this is in now open condition now once you open number two valve this is the valve so what happened the co2 will go and come through this line you can see over here and this is the time delay unit okay so through the time delay unit it will come out and then this is going to um, puncture all the co2 bottles which is connected okay once the co2 uh, through the co2 head assembly the co2 bottles are punctured so co2 will be going out through this non-return valve assembly to the common main manifold and once it is passing through that the master valve which we have seen it is already open so this is going to allow the co2 which comes from the bottle and through these lines you can see over here these are the protected area that is your engine room and these are the nozzles through which the co2 is going to uh, come out and uh, release to the various platforms and extinguishes the fire okay so you can see over here this is the thing and uh, we were talking about the audio visual alarm system this is in the each platform you can see that this is a co2 horn once the release cabinet open this is the micro switch location and with this uh, the audio visual alarm and the 
strip arrangements strip arrangements also you can see the electrical control box which is there so this is being happening and this is your bypass valve of the time delay unit so uh, some attachments also you can see here the pressure switch arrangement which will uh, give the remotely how much pressure is there and all and this is the pressure gauge manual we can see over there the uh, test air test air arrangement so the engine room 7 air uh, 7 bar pressure air uh, is being introduced once we have to do the uh, just uh, uh, lines flow through to the uh, the nozzles and all uh, that we can see over there okay and uh, the uh, non return valve assembly is this these are the co2 bottles which is being stored in the co2 room and uh, the release cabinet which is also there in the uh, co2 room okay so uh, we have uh, this is the relief valve also which is associated so once we see in the last of the uh, video we will see about the function of the relief valve uh, at in that here now the working of co2 flooding system continues as I have explained about that, uh, the head assembly of the CO2 uh, cylinder valve that will open and that will allow the CO2 uh, whatever is coming from the pilot bottle to operate the main valve and through the main valve the CO2 will be released uh, to the non-return valve assembly and then it is finally going to the manifold. So that is being explained. Okay. So next uh, the same thing uh, which you can see over here which you can go through the literature which I have already explained uh, regarding this. Okay, So all the CO2 from the main bottles uh, is being released to the common manifold. Since the master valve is already open, the CO2 from the manifold uh, is released to the protected space. So all these uh, things uh, which we have already discussed and uh, two release cabinets, one is the local which is there in the CO2 room uh, and another is the fire control station. Okay, And when one or more uh, remote release cabinets are being used so that remotely we can use the okay. so this is something which is a um, explanation part of it uh, both release cabinets are connected in parallel and non-return valves fitted in the lines to prevent the backflow of co2 so now nrv which we have seen it is going to prevent the backflow of the co2 and two two co2 bottles are placed in the release cabinet only one is sufficient to operate the both master and co2 head assembly so one uh, uh, is, is suppose is stuck or some problem then uh, with another also you can uh, discharge the co2 so this is something which is the redundancy there okay so you can see the same thing over here this is the engine room locations uh, you have this uh, the release cabinets and uh, here you can see over here the fuel oil diesel oil loop while all the quick closing valves also associated that will also be shut uh, over there and uh, you can see the how the nozzles which are being placed uh, in the various platforms of the engine room which is going to completely extinguish the fire okay so total number of bottles also you can see over here 244 bottles 83 bottles required quantity of the cylinder total 327 bottles engine room 327 bottles pump room 83 bottles so this is something which is clearly uh, separately shown over there so accordingly when we talk about the cargo holds and all uh, we have the bottles also available in the co2 room but that is not discharged through the flooding system that is discharged through the manual part of it okay so we will see when when we have to discuss about the co2 uh, for the cargo hold so that system is different so i will explain you in the next uh, video about it okay uh, next you can see over there the calculation of the co2 which is being required okay so as we have seen earlier the uh, requirement wise so first consideration is carbon dioxide when we talk about the free carbon dioxide coming out of the bottle is your um, valuation is your 0 0.56 meter cube per kg so 1 kg is approximately 0 0.56 meter cube coverage you can uh, take in that manner okay so gloss gross volume of the engine room space including casing this regulation says 35 percent gross volume of engine room space excluding casing is your 40 percent and uh, purifier room space is also 40 percent so quantity of the co2 is equal to the gross volume into the mixing ratio divided by 0.56 okay so this formula then you can see over here the, with the, a simple example it is being explained over here uh, engine room space including casing is 7324 uh, meter cube and uh, the quantity of co2 uh, in kgs is equal to 4577 
0.5 kg so if we if we divide by 45 so it is something which is 102 cylinders same like that in this case uh, the excluding engine room space excluding cases is 109 cylinders purifier room space as per the volumetric space of the purifier it is three cylinders so you can see over here the maximum quantity or the larger quantity is approximately 109 cylinders so that will be the cylinder of the co2 which has to be kept in the co2 room. so next you can see over here what is the function of time delay unit and how it is being we can see that the 60 to 90 second as per the manufacturer the time delay unit is working and uh, the time delay is being provided basically, basically this makes sure that the uh, positive positive opening of the master valve uh, is being ensured uh, with the help of uh, the time delay unit and uh, once it is being opened then only the co2 bottles are getting punctured and the co2 is getting delivered yeah. the next uh, as per the regulation of the fss code 2.1.3.2 they're saying that the pre-discharge alarm can be automatically uh, activated and uh, the time delay should not be less than 20 seconds before the medium is released that is a solar guideline so uh, the as per manufacturer it is 20 to 90 seconds provided or uh, sometimes a 60 to 90 second also being provided in so this video i am going to explain over here so this is uh, the co2 from the pilot cylinder which is coming over here and this is the main solenoid valve which is attached to this electrical circuit which you can see over here there is a very thin uh, pipe which is associated with the bellow like structure and the co2 once it is coming over here and this valve is being closed so this co2 stands over here this co2 stands over here and uh, when we talk about this this is something which is uh, allowing the uh, co2 with the thin line and this bellow is being pressurized so this, this takes the time and uh, once this is being fully pressurized this will make a contact and once this contact will be made then your complete circuit you can see over here is being energized uh, but it is associated with the timer so you can change the timer your 40 seconds 60 seconds 90 seconds whatever you can make the arrangement over here also and uh, the solenoid valve is being energized so once it is being energized so this is going to be open and the co2 which is coming from the pallet cylinder is going to go through the main co2 head assembly so this is the complete uh, uh, diagram uh, and uh, regarding the time delay unit which i have already explained to you guys uh, next uh, continuation is uh, this uh, which uh, the explanation of the valve uh, I have already uh, given in the diagram okay and the 69 60 to 90 second also okay. now the main thing is that co2 head assembly so uh, in in meo class 2 also this is being required so how the co2 uh, head assembly uh, is being operated you can see here this is the main valve arrangement and the spring loaded uh, arrangement is there this is the dip tube connections uh, which is there and uh, this uh, you can say here the larger area piston which is attached with the stem and this is going to operate uh, this uh, main valve assembly so that the co2 whatever is stored in the bottle has to pass through it but the, what about pilot valve so pilot check valve this is the small pilot check valve and the pilot port so the pilot port is connected over here so the co2 pilot coming from the pilot bottles are coming over here now the question is that uh, how this is going to operate this one this will not be operated at the time of opening why because the pressure inside this one this is uh, very high and amount of the co2 also which is coming over here is not sufficient enough to pressurize this valve and open this system okay so what happens this will follow this pass kindly see this uh, this is the path which is going to be followed by the the pilot co2 okay and this will comes and cover over this area this area will be pressurized so you can see over here this piston is having the large area or you can say with respect to this one the smaller area this is having the larger area so we know that uh, the force is equal to pressure into area so once the pressure is being applied on this such a large area so this force uh, it is going to come down basically against this spring so this will go and pressurize uh, this main valve against this spring and the co2 pressure also both are acting mind you so this is going to exceed that downward pressure downward pressure is going to exceed the upward pressure and the main valve assembly which is there this is going to be opened up and once it is opened up the co2 will come over here you can see the lip structure this is the lip structure which is shown over here so co2 which will come over here this will 
pass through this lip and this is going to pressurize uh, this valve assembly to further down and then uh, against the spring pressure this is going to open more and more and the large uh, maximum quantity of the CO2 that has to come over and this is your non return valve uh, port of uh, this so this will also be lifted up and this will be lifted up and this port will be opened completely so the main CO2 which is contained inside the bottle is going to pass through this uh, discharge outlet and uh, to the main manifold but uh, one uh, thing is there which we have to understand the CO2 which is entrapped over here the amount of CO2 which is entrapped over here this also has to be released so how it is going to be released that you have to understand the scenario so here you can see that once the co2 uh, which is coming out of this uh, bottle is being discharged completely to this there is no pressure inside the bottle then what happened the back pressure on this pilot check valve is going to be nil okay so what happened the pilot the the, the co2 which is entrapped over here again it will reverse back and through this thing it is going to pressurize the pilot check valve the pilot check valve will open and the entrap co2 through this pipeline which you can see over here pilot pressure pipeline through this pilot check valve it is going to come through this assembly and the non return valve assembly and again going to release to the uh, your uh, main manifold so this this explanation is basically for the name your class 2 or, or, or the higher technicality part of it so I hope uh, this is going to give you a, a better understanding of the and this is something which is the relief valve required by it is being required so uh, it is being fitted over to the co2 flooding system the main function of the relief valve is to release the co2 pressure in the manifold of the atmosphere manifold to the atmosphere outside the co2 suppose the excess pressure is being built up inside the uh, manifold so this needs to to be released over to the atmosphere so uh, otherwise what will happen it can damage the uh, main manifold or the other associated pipeline so uh, this is the situation uh, the set pressure of the relief valve is about 180 bar or as per the manufacturer it can change so once this pressure is being reached in the manifold so this is going to lift up an uh, atmosphere so this is uh, something which is uh, there so if the pressure in the fluid in the pipeline increases beyond the design working pressure the pressure must be relieved pressure uh, relief mechanism must work and uh, they, they must safe safeguard the complete system co2 flooding system co2 will accumulate in the manifold when it is released from the bottle and the master valve is being found closed so what happened there will be a huge uh, pressure which is being built up inside the manifold that must be released to the atmosphere otherwise complete pipeline will be damaged so that is being done over there another thing is the pressure of co2 is 55 bar at 20 degrees celsius as the co2 takes the temperature from the surrounding its pressure also increases to the very high dangerous level so there is a graph also which tells you how uh, exponentially the co2 pressure is being rise once the temperature is going to increase as we have seen in the in, in the requirement of the co2 room uh, maximum temperature should be 55 degree centigrade since these pipes are pressure tested at 190 bar so uh, this is something which is required to adjust it well below 190 so that uh, uh, they can be safeguarded okay any pressure accumulated in the manifold may release other co2 bottles also which are enacted so if non return valves between bottles and manifold is being damaged so this is also one of the cause that's why the non return valve is being given so i hope you guys understood what is the relief valve function and uh, the uh, co2 flooding system uh, the requirements of the co2 room requirements of the co2 system then the pressure testing part of it and the explanation of that complete working of the co2 uh, flooding system and uh, your uh, time delay unit explanation also i have given and the most importantly the co2 head assembly explanation is uh, being given on uh, this one and that will make you understand so kindly if, pay more attention or focus on the CO2 head assembly. Anyway, uh, thanking you. I hope this video will give you more knowledge and explanation about uh, CO2 flooding system. Thanking you. Thank you.